because we're celebrating in this episode UNESCO's International Day of Education, bannering the theme, Recover and Revitalize Education for the COVID-19 Generation. With the changes brought by the pandemic, the academic landscape has shifted from face-to-face -face classes to digital learning and modules. The lack of physical and social interaction proved to be a challenge for the students, teachers, and educators. What more for those whose classes required physical demonstrations and activities, as in the case of PE classes? Let's find out how different PE classes are now given the online learning mode. When I was in grade one, we studied PE. We always go to the playground. We run, we play. We have so much fun. In our online class, we study body parts and body movements. We enjoy watching videos, PowerPoint presentations by our teachers. I miss my old PE class because we go to the playground with our teachers and we play with our classmates, but we should be careful today because there is still a virus outside our home. Hi, I'm Maria Cristina Angela Sibaguin, 15, grade 9, from Malas Bulacan. Hi, I'm Queenie Mary Ann Sibaguin, I'm 13 years old, grade 8 student from Bulacan. So, paano nga po pala namin ginagawa ang online lesson sa PE or physical education? So, unang, unang ginagawa po namin ng aming teacher is i-discuss po niya yung module. Then, after po ng discussion, magpo-post po siya sa G Classroom ng module. And, yun po yung parang basihan namin kapag di po siya nagsasend ng recording. Then, after po nun, during that discussion, i-ano po niya sa amin yung activities na aming gagawin i-explain po niya. Pwede ko kayo mahirapan. Then, after po nun, when we do our activities, yung sinabi po niya sa amin, um, we will be doing that for at least, like, work out through video. Then, we will pass it for, through G-Drive po. Kasi dun po nag yung mga teachers namin. Kailangan po is time management. Kasi din po, madai pong destruction. Kunwari po mga social medias. Siyempre po, Yeah, mag-aalaw ka din po ng time doon, pero minsan po na, nasusobra na. Kaya hindi mo nagagawa yung mga projects mo. Nandun din po yung ka, bigla pong nawawalan ng wifi. Kaya kailangan mo din po mag-extend ng oras para hindi ka po malit sa pagpa. Um, for me, yung intense po kasi niya is somewhat good and bad for me. Pero after po kasi nung stressful na yon may ginhawaan ka after mo tapusin. Kasi po, ganun po ang pag-aaral. <laughs> Mahirap po siya, pero masaya. Sa, sa amin naman po, kailangan mo na lang talaga mag-cook up kasi wala po tayong magagawa sa panahon ngayon. Hindi po pwedeng mag-face-to-face -face kahit may pandemya po. So, um, avoid distractions na lang po din unahin yung pag-aaral. Um, the way that I would describe my PE now, is it's harder to do at home, not just because there is little space here in our house, but also because it's uncomfortable to do it in front of other people. And basically, it's hard to do without teachers or other classmates to instruct us whether we are doing it right or wrong. I feel like face-to-face -face is more effective not only because the teacher is there in front of you physically, but also because of the environment and people around you. Um, I think it's hard for us to do online class because we are at a different environment. Now, I mean, not like a home is a different environment to people, but it is hard when there are many things at home distracting you, telling you, to just lie in bed instead of listen to your teacher. And yeah, we don't get to socialize more because of 
COVID and we are staying home, also online class. So, yeah, it makes it pretty boring or dull to just be here at home and study all day. I mostly express my feelings through journaling. It helps even if you just type it in your notepad what happened in your day, whether it was good or not. Or to help me be productive, I set alarms, I set a routine. It's pretty much things that will help me go around without being lazy in a day. It is clear that our PE teachers had to step up in order to teach their students well under the current challenges and circumstances. And they all deserve recognition for their efforts. So today, Rise Up, Shape Up dedicates our episode to our beloved PE teachers. We are pleased to have in today's episode two professors and educators, Dr. Drolly Claraval and Dr. Mary Grace Bulata. Dr. Drolly Claraval is currently the city sports consultant in the city of Ilagan in Isabella and teaches in Isabella State University as an associate professor. Dr. Claraval also served as Women in Sports Project Director in 2018 and 2019 and as a sports consultant for DepEd from Gasinan too. Further, she has also published researches on sports management and athletic competitions and is also a proud member of the Philippine Team Masters. Dr. Mary Grace Bulato holds a doctorate degree in philosophy, major in educational management, and is currently the MAPE Department Head of St. Mary's University in Nueva Vizcaya. She was also part of the evaluating panel for the Bachelor of Physical Education program under the Regional Quality Assurance Management Team of CHED Region 2. Dr. Bulatao also led a number of researches on sports and athleticism and educational management. Let's hear their stories on the challenges experienced in teaching PE at this time and how they creatively powered up their classes to keep the children active and moving despite the virtual classroom setup. I am so happy that uh, I have this course. Um, the physical education teaches me, teaches me to become a versatile person. I love my course, of course. Because you are going, our role as a physical educators plays a very, very important role in the life of our students. Because we develop not only the physical, but also the mental, the social, the emotional, and most of all, spiritual. So, minsan, Ang pinofocus lang ng mga teachers magturo ng physical education ay on the physical side, mental. But one thing that I really appreciate, the impact of teaching the spiritual side. Because according to the Bible in Matthew uh, 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. No, focus on it. Kasi dito ko nakikita in my 25 years of teaching physical education, if you include spiritual aspect, na develop na gusto at nagiging maayos sila na professional someday. So, um, aside from a physical Educator, I also engaged myself in um, a lot of activities in our community. So sports po, we also developed uh, mga grassroots ng ating mga kabataan. So here in City of Bilagan, we are so proud and we are so happy that we already hosted international events. So we are already hosted the Sea Youth, Southeast Asian Youth competition. And of course, we also hosted the Batang Pinoy, no? sponsored by the Philippine Sports Commission. So dito sa, sa city namin, okay, especially, okay, the Isabella State University, kung saan po ako nagtuturo, 
We give our 100% support to our LGUs, especially in the physical activity ng ating mga kababayan. And not only that, we also help ang mga kids to train them well, especially nga yung grassroots natin. Okay, ang ginagawa ko po dito sa Ilagan ay we um, contacted the Philippine Sports Commission, the Patafa, no? Uh, kumukuha po kami at nagre-request kami ng mga experts in sports to teach our young kids dito sa aming city. So the Isabella State University, uh, ang partner po ng LGU namin para mag magbakabuo kami ng mga activities para dito sa city namin. And through this activity, okay, through this activity, uh, we produce good athletes in our city. But of course, mayroon tayong mga tinatawag ba kumbaga obstacles. So we have a lot of plans, we have a lot of dreams on how to develop our students and our athletes. So ang nangyayari po ay because of this pandemic, we encounter great problems in developing our athletes. So lahat po ng mga training ng mga kabataan natin ay na-stop. Okay? So the same through with sa PE classes namin. So we have a very uh, limited um, time in conducting our classes through virtual activity kasi uh, we understand that some of our students ay hindi po sila, they don't have enough loads to um, sustain yung lahat na kanilang mga classes. So, our university required us to just meet our students for 15 minutes only just to give them instructions what to do in their classes. So, sa akin po, personally, um, the time no nag nagstop po ang a uh, face to face that was March no and it's already the final examination so ang ginawa ko po in order for us to continue our um classes we have this uh, activity so mayroon po kaming sa sa P14 namin ang activity natin for example board games and then we have the activity then na uh, to develop the core, the endurance, a balance, and stability of our students. In order for us, pati hindi, pati po yung mga kasamahan po, in order for us to still continue our activity, so ang ginawa po namin na style ay ang mga estudyante po namin, for example, sa board games, we give them instruction to play with their loved ones. Pag once na na-convince nila ang loved ones nila to play with them, so they are going to take a video with that, and then they are going to describe kung ano yung feeling nila no, doing the board games with their family. And you know what? Yung impact ay sobrang ganda, nakakatuwa. There are some students, some of my students in uh, civil engineering, sabi nila, doon sa comment nila na they're so thankful that through this pandemic, they have bonding with their family. The last time that they played uh, uh, board games with their, with his father was during uh, 10 years ago. So because of this pandemic, sabi niya doon sa comment niya, ay na-restore ulit yung relationship nila no, as father and son. And not only that, Pagdating naman sa ibang board games like Scrabble, so they invited their the mother, the father, the brothers and the sisters, and the whole family. Now through this physical activity that I gave them, no, they uh, restore the good relationship among um, their uh, family. And uh, another technique and another activity that na uh, pinagawa ko during that the, the last um, time ng March. On the pandemic, 
we have the what you call the activity na nagcha-challenge talaga sa kanila. So, kahit nag-iisa sila, no? Ang sabi ko, gawin niyo in order for you to improve your speed, you improve your cardio, improve your stability, you do the different kinds of the circuit activity at home. So kung makikita ninyo, yung effect nun ay ibang klase din. So based doon sa kanilang mga comment and activity and uh, uh, evaluation na binigay ng mga estudyante ko, okay, sobra silang na-excite doon sa activity nila because they are doing it uh, not only sa kanilang daan, but ginagawa pa din po nila sa rice field, ginagawa po nila sa bundok, at ginagawa po nila within doon sa kanilang community. So, bawat isa sa kanila ay gumagawa-gawa no, ng paraan para matuloy nila ang kanilang activity and their requirements in physical education. So, they are not just doing these things. So I always encourage them that they're not going to do these things just because of their grades. Uh, sabi ko palagi sa kanila, please do this activity not only for the grades, but please do this activity or perform this activity because it will help a lot to boost your immune system. It will help a lot and it give you a lot of benefits no physically so yun ang motivation ko palagi sa kanila and based in their evaluation right after doing um, giving them different kinds of activity okay uh, i give them a pre uh, activity you know for them to follow so after that they're going to make an evaluation and um, the impact of that activity in their lives at doon nakikita ko na they're so happy doing it. At nakakatuwa pa minsan, okay, ang kanilang nanay ang nagbibideo sa kanila, ang kanilang tatay, kapatid. And then they are also doing that. So, if for example, if they're going to do the running in the morning, they're going to run with their mother, their father, sometimes their brother and sisters. So, makikita po natin yan kasi binibideo po nila. So, doon makikita mo na they're not just doing these things because of the grade. Of course, aside from that, they are enjoying no, what they are doing. So, ang, ang pinakamahalaga no, sa kanila ay tayo, tayo mga physical educators, ipapakita din natin sa kanila na we are doing it. For example, kami sa family ko, may family during the pandemic na nakikita nila yan sa video or sa post ko sa Facebook, that I am, we are, the whole family are doing the physical activity. All my children, they are doing the physical activity with me. So, iba-iba kasi all of them are, are engaged in sports also. They are engaged in tennis, engaged in taekwondo. Um, ako, personally, I'm engaged in uh, athletics. I'm a member of the Philippine Masters Athletics and I compete in the different countries na. And I maintain no, my strength and I maintain my physical uh, condition in order for me to keep doing kung ano yung gusto ko. So as an athlete, I love doing it. I, am, I love doing the activity because through physical education, you can do a lot of things. No? You can have a lot of friends. Through physical education, you're going to to make your body fit through physical education. You're going to uh, improve your um, mental ability through physical education. You are going to have a lot of friends through the different um, activities. And at the same time, because of your involvement to the different activities, exposing yourself to the different people around you, you're going to um, develop your emotion. And of course, sa lahat, no? if you are going to do things, you always include God 
in your activities. So if you want to be successful in all the things that you are going to do in life, it is very, very important that you will always include God in your life. Okay? So that activity, yung ngayong pandemic, no? I'm not only doing the, the physical activity teaching students, but aside from that, I'm also hey, um, engaging myself in um, therapy. So I have my um, therapy center helping people you know, using their pains in their chronic and acute pains, people na hirapan maglakad, stroke patients, people with chronic um, frozen shoulders, um, basta lahat-lahat po na mga, lahat po na mga activity, okay, lahat po na mga, mga physical uh, pains ay dito sa center ko ginagawa ko din po yan. So, I am so happy that uh, uh, I have this opportunity with you this morning. Uh, I will always believe in the adage, a sound mind in a sound body. Of course, we all know na ang physical education, it is always been a subject that breaks the monotony of a class setup or a classroom setting. Okay? It is in the physical education subject where they can run, they can shout, they can enjoy the gym, and so on and so forth. And we all know that uh, with the onset of pandemic, those things suddenly stop. So how can we teach? So what will be the strategies that we will, that we will use in, in teaching physical education now? So it is where uh, physical education comes in. Okay, because of the pan pandemic, young people nowadays are already confined in, in gadget, which leads them to a deep-seated condition. And uh, eventually, they, they get sick because of lack of exercises. So it is here where physical education comes in. We can, we can still make them, uh, we can still make them active, do the usual activity in the classroom by creating an avenue for them to engage in physical activities, which leads in uh, the answering of my next question. And because of the pandemic, we all know that um, physical education subject is basically a skill-oriented subject. So kapag skill-oriented siya, kailangan talagang face-to-face, -face, actual na tinuturoan natin yung mga bata. And considering the fact that we are always uh, after the outcome of the learning that we got, we are to teach. So I can say that at, uh, teaching virtually encourages me or personally and my faculty to become creative in our teaching. So uh, we need to plan our lesson ahead of time, thinking the best strategies that we can apply to meet the expectation of our student. But the question is how? So, um, of course, sa mga nakikinig na mga uh, nakikinig at nanonood na mga uh, physical educator uh, education teacher we always know that we physical education teachers are uh, we are the best visual aids okay that's the reason why we really need to be skilled so uh, since we are the visual aids uh, most often than that we apply direct teaching demonstration teaching, we perform, and then our student will follow. That is in the face-to-face. -face. But how will this be done if we are already an, an online? So here in our school, here in St. Mary's University, we have a very supportive administration. So uh, when the, uh, pande at the outset of the pandemic, our learning management system has been in place. So they, uh, uh, they convene us all the administrators, and then plan what will happen. So um, specifically in, um, in my department, in the physical education department, uh, what, I, uh, what I personally uh, applied is I convene my faculty and then we, we try to uh, solve the following issues because we really need to foresee what will happen. Kasi kakaiba na eh, kakaiba na yung mangyayari. 
imagine ituturo mo yung sayaw. Paano mo ituturo yung sayaw kapag kapag virtual? So, um, uh, there are available um, strategies naman found in the net, but the thing is, we really need to know how to do it. So, as as uh, the step, the first step that we do, that actually uh, happened actually is we identify the subject that needs to be taught in the semester. Okay, so um, then after identifying the subject to be taught, we we list down the topics, topic per topic yon. So, andito yung topic namin, ito yung strategies, ito yung assessment na gagawin. So, um, how will, uh, but the, the thing is, kahit na-identify mo na siya, okay, nandito na lahat, nakalista na. So, ano na yung next na gagawin natin? Something like that. So, uh, specifically, ang ginawa po namin, um, binidyo po namin yung sarili namin with all the skills. And then we upload it. Sumayaw kami, nag-video kami, and then sinend namin sa kanila. So, paano namin sila itetest? Something like that. So, we usually applied uh, return demo. So, we also let them perform uh, the same skills in video, and they, they will return to us the video through our LMS, yung learning uh, management system namin. And then, Another strategy that we actually applied is the individual uh, video call. Kasi iniisip din namin paano kami, paano namin sila makikita ng aktwal na ginagawa yung skill. We made use of all possible uh, ways of communication so that we can reach them. Of course, not all our students are capable na mag internet isa uh, karamihan sa mga estudyante namin naghahanap pa ng signal sa bundok something like that para uh, so that they will be able to um, log in in our LMS so mga ganong instances na problema na na encounter ng mga estudyante namin so kaya we really need to uh, kung hindi namin sila ma ma communicate sa uh, GC Okay, kung wala, wala sila sa GC, may personal number sila ng cellphone, text, any possible ways. We also have our netiquettes. We have our set of netiquettes. Uh, that is actually the, uh, the things we always do before any online classes begin. So, we reminded them of the things to be done in an online classes. This might be the, the things that we need to consider. Because in, in uh, digital teaching, there are always uh, digital teaching challenges. Okay? First, na digital teaching challenge natin is the stable internet connection. So, Nueva Vizcaya, Mountain Province, Isabela um, is a little bit mountainous. So, most often than not, uh, medyo mahina ang uh, internet. Uh, uh, another digital teaching challenges is physical space. For example, nasa bahay yung estudyante natin, syempre, kasi nga online siya. And we are asking him or her to perform a stance. For example, basic position where most exercises begins. And my limited space siya. Something like that. Okay? And then next is, uh, we all know that in the digital teaching challenge, it's purely visual and verbal, right? So, nakikita mo lang sila through, uh, through Google Meet or Zoom. And then, lahat puro lang, hindi mo nga sila nahahawakan nga eh, kaya through verbal communication. And then, the next is safety. Okay, so those are the things I would like to discuss kasi um, since we are, st we are on uh, best practices on how we, will, we can make our student move, on how we let our children get out from that couch. So we really need to uh, think of every possible way so that we can still make them physically active and thus preventing them from uh, incurring any uh, diseases or any untoward uh, incident for that matter. Okay, so um, uh, personally, I just list down uh, these key areas for effective online coaching. So, um, uh, the thing is, uh, we, we are supposed to be a little bit techy. So, technical setup. 
And then second one is organization and planning. Okay. And then effective and efficient communication, then in innovation and creativity. So I would just like to dwell further on the organizational and planning. Uh, we always plan for a smooth flow of uh, our lesson in our class. The first thing that we need to do is you we will try to ask our student uh, to enter in our Google Meet or in our Zoom maybe 15 minutes before. Something like that. So, yun po yung ginagawa namin. Uh, we scheduled um, Google Meet, Zoom ahead of time. And we always consider the internet connection of our student. The second one is uh, when we are using Zoom or Google Meet, we have to mute the participants. Diba? Kagaya ngayon. Okay? So, as hosts, we have the right to do that. And the next is we need to ask our student to rename their names in the in the meeting uh, the next one is um sa zoom kasi pwede nating i-spotlight yung student natin di ba so i-spotlight mo siya for example so execute dance steps using uh, the three four time signature choose one dance step so ganun ang instruction ko so nagtawag ako ng isang estudyante i-spotlight ko siya so siya lang yung nakikita So in that way, dalawa yung ginagawa ko. Na-check ko mismo yung estudyante at napapanood siya ng mga classmates niya and they learn from her. Okay? So another thing that I would like to point out aside from organization and planning is effective and efficient communication. We really need to focus on our student always. Okay? And we need to speak clearly at the right volume. Even in a virtual uh, session only, you need to still see them eye to eye. The next is uh, we have to know where and how to position during the demonstration. O, kung tayo naman yung, uh, ang isa pa po kasing ginawa ko, uh, naka-Zoom meeting kami, actual akong nag-demo, actual din nila akong sinundan. So open naman lahat yung camera nila. So sabay-sabay din lang kami in a screen. Kagaya rin din lang ng actual na face-to-face. -face. Okay, let's perform the fundamental position of hands and feet. One, two, gumaganoon ka rin. So, uh, nung ginawa ko yung lesson na yan, I'm still in proper attire I'm and I'm still in our gym. So, dito lang yung gym namin. So, nakikita pa rin ako ng mga estudyante ko na nasa gym pa rin ako. And nakikita ko rin sila. Okay, develop simple visual cues for key responses. So, when we say visual cues, mag-establish ka na sa classroom or sa estudyante mo na uh, when I when I nod, ibig sabihin that is already fine with me. We go back to the other. Something like that. Yung mga gesture na dapat natin sabihin sa mga estudyante natin. Okay? So, learn to scan across the multiple screen. So, uh, yun nga, dapat sa mga tayo talaga, kahit na kahit na may, medyo may edad na tayo, we really still need to learn to be techy kasi we will definitely be in left behind by our students considering na super techy sila, the are millennials, Generation Z for that matter, that we really need to go into their world. Okay? Kung kinakailangan pa ngang alamin mo kung ano yung nilalaro nila lagi, yan na ML or whatsoever. Okay, so uh, I mean, I will now proceed to the innovation and creativity. So, um, of course, in this pandemic, we always apply trial and error, di po ba? So, kung ano yung kung ano yung maganda, yun yung i-apply natin. Hindi ko pa hindi pa namin masasabi po ito na best practices namin. Uh, sabi nga, sige, try lang natin kung ano yung pinaka-effective na strategy, yun na yung gagawin natin. Okay, and I would just like to share to you one a strategy that we've done during the last, uh, the first semester of this year. Uh, we made use of TikTok. So, uh, best online exercises challenge, nagpa-contest kami ng buong university, ng first year, saka second year, in celebration of ours, is the week. Now, in uh, this semester, we are teaching sports. So, Paano tayo magtuturo ng sports sa estudyante natin? We search the net for all possible virtual games related to badminton, table tennis, uh, team sports, and uh, uh, dual sports for that matter. And then they will play the virtual game online. Okay? Although uh, hindi nakagaya ng, ng actual na maituturo mo sa kanila yung skill. 
But with that only, uh, by playing virtually, or kahit na yung kamay na lang nila yung gumagamit na ganyan, kasi makikikontest sila eh. Makikikontest sila in that application na meron silang kalaro. So, uh, in that way, syempre, o oh, di ba, mag strategize naman sila kung paano nila gawin. So, they can apply the strategies they learn from us. So, uh, there are so many possible apps in the in the net na we can apply. Meron ding virtual uh, game ng basketball, sila rin din lang yung mag-shoot, yun nga lang, hindi na nga lang sa talaga actual na gagamit ng bola, ganyan, talagang sa kamay lang. Okay? But at least, in that way, we can, they're still learning. Okay? May mga strategies pa naman silang i-apply. So, that is being creative and open to new ideas. Okay? In all aspects, so that we can develop our class, uh, well, so that we can make our class uh, efficient and effective. Uh, usually, ang na-encounter po lang namin na problema when it comes to our online class, virtual class, is the internet connection. And of course, kapag nag-brown out na siya, yan, brown out now, hindi na, kami na, mag, na, hindi na namin na-meet yung mga estudyante namin. So, what we did is to reschedule exam. So, we always have the so-called netiquette. So, yun yung gusto kong i-share ulit sa inyo. And then, the first one is, we are still asking our student, if possible naman, if possible, to still wear their complete PE uniform. Okay? Uh, that is, to set our mind or to set their mind na we are in a class. Okay? The next is, we are always uh, telling them to use a laptop or desktop or a phone with camera kasi nga synchronous. We need to see them. Di ba, kumustahan din. Kumustahin mo rin sila kung nakikita mo kung paano na sila, what are the challenges, problems they encounter in their online. In that way, uh, we are doing shepherding to our students. Okay? So, next is, uh, we always ask them, if possible din lang naman, to log in in 15 minutes. Kasi mahirap din naman na, ano, na, na late. Yan. Before uh, is scheduled the setup. The next is, uh, sinasabi namin na, your space should be large enough for you to be able to perform the skill. Okay? As I made mention, of course, physical education is really skill-oriented. Kailangan maituro natin mabuti yung skill na gusto natin maituro sa ating mga estudyante. At, at in, in that way, if it is a skill, it really requires practice and while doing it, they need a little bit uh, wide space. Next, choose uh, an area with minimal background noise. There was one time when I asked my student to uh, for a video call. So sabi ko, oh, mag-prepare ka na ha, tatawagan kita. Ang gagawin niya, niya actually is on locomotor skills. So, um, pinag-perform ko siya. And then all of a sudden, biglang sumabay yung tatay niya sa likod. So, natatawa naman ako. Kaya medyo in ko yung, <laughs> yung camera ko muna. Uh, but deep inside, actually, as a teacher, I'm happy. Kasi ginagawa rin niya yung pinag-perform ng anak niya. So, <laughs> di ba, nakakatawa na, na all of a sudden, eh, nandyan naman pala yung buong family na nag-join doon. Hindi lang niya pinapakita yung camera. Nakikisayaw din siya. Something like that. So, yon Kaya lang, kuminsan kasi, uh, yung noise, noise din. Although hindi talaga natin maiwasan kung minsan yan eh. And the next is safety. The surface must be kapag, kapag for example, you ask... Um, Sa amin kasi ngayon, sa fit to namin, it's combative, eh, combative sports. So, we usually ask them to perform the basic tumbling stance, basic tumbling. Uh, of course, uh, we always ask them to have their own foam. Y- y- yung bed na nila, ah, ang gagamitin nila. Remember that it will always be safety first. Yan. Okay? And then, uh, another guidelines is, uh, we always... Um, check attendance and then in the LMS we usually ask them to have their feedback so pag nag feedback na sila doon present sila so pwede naman silang mag log in uh, pero ang pinakamatagal na pag log in is 15 minutes and then uh, the last one is stay focused and enjoy the class so, yun yung mga netiquettes na na formulate po namin sa aming department and yun po yung aking mga ina-apply ngayon sa aking pagtuturo 
dito sa college namin. And uh, yun din yung ina-apply ng buong department. So that would be all. <laughs> I think that is uh, the thing that I would just like to share with you. And I hope that you've learned something. So thank you for watching, for listening, and for uh, taking your time with the PSC program, Rise Up, Shape Up. Not at your best? You may be dehydrated. You need the carry sweat. It replaces the electrolytes you've lost and helps you perform at your best. Be at your best with the carry sweat. Now that we've heard how difficult distance learning can be, especially when physical interaction is crucial in class, we understand the great deal of stress our teachers and educators are enduring. In today's WOW segment, we'll talk about managing stress for distance learning, and today's woman in wellness is Karina Crisostomo. Karina Crisostomo is an educator herself, teaching about personal effectiveness, psychology, assessment of student learning, child and adolescent development in the De La Salle University. Prior to becoming a faculty member at DLSU, she was a personality development facilitator in the Fashion Academy Manila and John Robert Powers International, where she trained students for image enhancement, including voice, power, power dressing, and body alignment, as well as voice communication and personal growth. Karina is currently the Managing Director of Global Image Management. Take down notes on managing stress from Karina Crisostomo. Hello, good morning everybody. We all know that this pandemic has brought about changes with the way we do things. And of course, kasama po dito ang pag-conduct natin ng ating mga classes. So the whole country, actually the whole world, has moved from traditional face-to-face -face learning environment to online distance learning. Students and teachers alike are going through major adjustments. And as teachers, we create our modules. We try to let our lessons fit the online learning environment. For our students, you have been adjusting the way you learn virtually. And given all of these circumstances, we cannot deny that these have brought about some stresses in our lives recently. So how have you been? How has the past months of online learning been for you? Kamusta na po kayo? Have you been feeling quite stressed, tired, given marami kayong mga homeworks, mas marami ang mga asynchronous tasks ninyo that you have to complete, di ba? Or amidst everything, you feel good, you feel relaxed, although the pandemic is just right around the corner, but then um, you're feeling at peace, more or less. So, stress ka ba? Relax ka ba? Given this whole situation that you are in right now. So, regardless of whatever your answer is, it's okay. I know that there are good days. I understand sometimes we have good days, we have bad days. But then, on those bad days that we're feeling quite stressed, uh, a little bit anxious, depressed, or, or tired, especially for the online learning, it's just a matter of getting to know what we can do given those stressors. Ano ba ang mga stressors na na-encounter natin given the online learning experience? So some of these things you might have been experiencing, especially for our students. Number one, Jan. Ayan. Um, unreliable internet connection. You know, this is the Philippines. I'm sure you're aware of that. We may be one of the countries with... Um, a lot of issues or perhaps mabagal ang ating connectivity dito sa Pilipinas. Perhaps some of you are also experiencing yung challenges when it comes to sustaining interest or maintaining the attention during synchronous sessions. You know, studies have shown na yung longer time in front of your device or in front of your laptop uh, during a synchronous session or an online discussion may not always be very good for the level of interest and attention span of students. Some of the students, perhaps, na experience yung kaunting stress dahil sa pagko-complete ng mga asynchronous tasks ninyo. 
Uh, sa totoo lang, ang principle kasi ng online learning is there's more asynchronous task than synchronous task. And given that there's more asynchronous task, it's another adjustment for the students on how to self-regulate their learning. Perhaps some of you, kasi nga, you are taking maybe around 10 subjects, 11 subjects for this school year. Hindi nag-adjust yung number of subjects this school year kahit nag-shift tayo to online learning. You might be experiencing information overload. Some might also be experiencing yung lack of resources. May they be financial, may they be uh, resources in relation to the materials, the technology that you need to complete your requirements. Given kasi itong lockdown natin, itong quarantine situation natin, hindi naman basta-basta makakalabas tayo para makabili ng mga materials na kailangan natin to complete our school requirements. Some of us, we might have some issues with our devices, issues with um, technological knowledge. So all of these are resources that uh, might also cause some stress for some of the students and even the teachers alike. And of course, some of you might be missing your friends, your classmates, yung kwentuhan sa classroom with your classmates, yung pag interact natin with our friends in school. I'm sure all of you can relate to this, na miss nyo ang inyong mga kaklase, mga kaibigan ninyo, and even some of your family members that you do not live with. So all of these can be a source of our stress, especially for the students during online learning. Why is it important to point out or to acknowledge ano tong mga stressors na ito? That is because marami din siyang epekto sa atin. It might lead to decreased attention span. It might lead to poor decision making, especially in school. Some of us, some of you might be experiencing difficulty in concentrating or focusing with your tasks. Some might be feeling quite sad, depressed, tired, exhausted. And of course, there will always be physical effects of stress. So your physical health may definitely be affected too. But do not worry, there will always be ways to manage all of these stressors. There are tips that I can share with you today on how you can manage your stress, especially in online learning. First, focus on what you can control and let the rest go. Ano mini nito? Hindi lahat ng bagay kaya natin kontrolin. Hindi lahat ng bagay kaya nating um, problemahin. Because in reality, hindi naman lahat ay may ka kaagad-agarang solusyon. So what are these things? Some of these things na hindi natin kayang kontrolin. One, pandemic. Um, etong situation natin, etong pandemic na situation that we are all in right now, it may take some time for it to completely be resolved. But for now, this is what we have, this is what we are facing, and it's not something that we can immediately control. Number two is internet connection. So I know every now and then during your synchronous tasks or synchronous sessions, nawawala or napuputol ang session ninyo because of internet connection issues. So again, that is something that we just have to wait out. Sometimes I know it's a challenge. I know it's annoying. Nakakainis minsan. But then it's something that we can just uh, wait for and something that we also cannot control, unfortunately. Brought about by the pandemic, anjan ang online learning. Online learning is something that we are all experiencing right now. And uh, we may not control the existence of online distance learning right now, as this is brought about by the situation. But then what we can control, however, is how we study. Right? How much time can we dedicate to our school, to our studies, to our homework? We can also control eating habits. How much healthy or unhealthy food do we take in? We can also control the way we limit social media use. I know sometimes nakaka-stress din 
yung um, pagbabasa natin o panonood ng certain certain uh, shows or videos in social media. So, it is also our choice. It is something that we can control kung magbababad ba tayo sa social media o hindi. And our attitude. Our attitude is something that we can definitely control. How positive, how negative we are, our perspectives in all of the situation that we are in, especially now in this pandemic situation, kaya naman tayo nag-shift to online learning. So you see, some things we can control, such as study time, eating habits, our attitude, social media use, and other behaviors. But there are things like the pandemic, the online learning, our internet connection, that we just have to learn to let go. Another way of alleviating our stress or to help us manage our stress is also to manage our time effectively. I know that we all get distracted with so many other activities at home. Siyempre, nandiyan yung mga kapamilya natin, mga kapatid, andyan ang TV, andyan ang games. Ayan, definitely ang mga games. So maraming distractions din talaga at home. But just make sure that you can set your priorities. For example, may mga big project ka sa school, may mga um, school requirements, papers. You need to give them sufficient time, maybe in the afternoon, to complete them. A lot time for play, rest, eating, sure, pati net surfing, and of course, bonding time with your family. Ultimately, it's really creating and of course, doing your best to maintain your daily routines. At least in this way, you get to make sure that you get things done properly and that you won't end up cramming at the end. I know for some of us, um, pag nagka-cram, di ba? Nagka-cram the night before the submission, you get really, really stressed out and this can affect your output. It is also very important to stay connected. Kahit online na lahat, we can still video chat with our friends, our family members that we cannot personally be with right now. Yung sense of connection with others, yung sense of uh, being able to still interact, kahit virtual man lang yan, uh, is still important for our mental health and for our personal growth. In this way, we are still able to socialize and keep up with our social relationships. If there are things that you need help with in school, make sure to approach your teacher and ask for help. Huwag kayo mahiya. Your teachers, I know, and also the teachers out there, I know you're doing your best uh, to really make this situation um, a, a fulfilling pa rin. You're maximizing the online learning opportunities in order to help our dear students. Kaya mga students, huwag kayo mahiya. Approach your teacher who merong mga questions about this, uh, about the lesson, about the requirements. Do not be shy to ask for help. Our teachers usually provide consultation periods, and that you can also email them uh, during those periods for your concerns. Actually, not just teachers, no. Maybe you also have some friends, some fam family members, any anyone that you know that you can also contact. Uh, to ask help, especially when it comes to your school, uh, school requirements or activities. Given some of us, uh, we have hectic, a really, really hectic schedule, we also need to take a break. This is what we call study break. So you can do this by leaving your laptop, your cell phone, or any device. Uh, go out, get some fresh air, or maybe stretch your legs for a bit. It is also good for our health to take in some sunlight. Uh, perhaps well, when you wake up in the morning, you go out, makaramdam naman kayo ng kaunting sunshine, vitamin D din yan in order to boost your immune system. Um, you know, it's very important to pause, to take some time off, uh, to have a break every now and then. 
as if re-energizing ourselves in order to carry on with the things that we have to do in school. So, katulad ng nandito sa slide, keep calm and take a study break. But of course, remember this, if our body is not healthy, our mind will not be healthy as well. That is why, take care of yourself. Sleep at least 8 hours every night. Kayo, gaano katagal ang tulog ninyo? Do you get to sleep 8 to 10 hours every night? I know um, it can be hard for some, especially for our students out there. Uh, lalo na kung meron kayong mga inaabangan o tinatapos na series sa Netflix. So try, try to resist staying up all night watching your favorite series on Netflix or on TV or um, may sinusundan kayo na mga YouTube channels. It's okay to use them, uh, pambalipas oras, pang stress reliever na rin, but do not make it eat up your sleep hours. You need to rejuvenate. Don't, uh, don't forget, you need to rejuvenate and prepare for the following day's activities. Get a sufficient amount of sleep in order to do so. Exercising. Exercising is also a good way to keep yourself healthy. It can be light exercises. It can be some stretches, yoga exercises, cardio. Kung kaya nyo naman, pwede rin naman sa bahay um, with the help of YouTube videos. So take kahit 10 to 15 minutes lang yan of exercise every day. I promise you, you will feel so much better. Mas magkakaroon kayo ng energy when you do your work, when you do your school activities, uh, as long as you have exercise as part of your daily routine. And for the other picture that you see there, uh, eat healthy. I know we are all in quarantine right now, but please let us do our best to eat healthy and limit junk food intake. Fruits and vegetables will always provide the right nutrients that our body needs. Diba minsan pag masyadong um, unhealthy yung mga kinakain din natin, it also brings us down physically, uh, mentally, emotionally. It brings us down and it may make us uh, not want to do the things that we have to do, especially for our online classes. Along with all of these stress management tips that I have shared with you, let us keep a positive attitude. Let us remember to see the bright side also of the things in spite of whatever we are experiencing right now. Let's see. Let's look at the bright side. Stay positive. Uh, think about this, no? With the technological advances, we are able to find ways still to continue with our learning. And we are blessed at that part. And continuous learning, if you ask me, is something that uh, our mind and body really needs. Of course, do not forget to pray and seek guidance and support from God. So all of these... Um, ultimately, ang pagmamanage naman talaga ng stress is really how we respond to the situation proactively and positively. I would like to share this line with all of you. Remember, it is not the situation, but it is how one responds to the situation that determines the quality of one's life. We cannot stress over and over about the same things without um, feeling bad, feeling hurt, feeling anxious, feeling depressed. So why not look at the situation that we are in from a different perspective? And perhaps when we are more proactive, solution-oriented, mas positive ang mindset natin as we face every situation, we might also improve our well-being or the quality of our life. Practicing these ways and tips to manage stress, I'm sure you will be able to not just survive, but enjoy your online learning experiences. For both our students, our teachers out there, this is a new, uh, take this as a new adventure for you. For our teachers especially, take this as an opportunity for you to innovate yourselves as educators. Alam ko pong kayang-kaya ninyo 
ang um, challenge na ito and that you will be successful in what you do as educators. For the students, keep going. Push lang. Push lang ng push. Remember all of these tips. Remember these ways to help you manage your stressors. And you too will also be successful in your learning experiences. So with that, thank you very much. Good luck and God bless to all. Now it's time for a regular dose of sports trivia with K Sport. Take it away, Commissioner Salia Kiram. Noong nakaraang episode 9, naikwento ko sa inyo ang Asian Games at laro ng kababaihan noong unang panahon. Ngayon naman, ang kwento ng sports ay tungkol sa mga naunang laro gaya ng kuju, foot races, at horse races. Ang kuju o kickball ay isang ancient Chinese games na pinaniniwala ang pinakaunang uri ng football. Ang bola ng kuju ay yari sa leather na puno ng feather. Alam niyo bang simula Tang Dynasty, ang bola ng kuju ay hangin ang loob? Gamit ito bilang exercise sa mga Chinese military noong 3rd hanggang 2nd century BC. Ang net ng kujo ay nakahang ng 30 feet o 9 meters mula sa lupa. Ang foot races ay isa sa mga naunang laro ng kababaihan. Noong Sumali ang mga kababaihan sa foot races sa Olympic Stadium, Noong Korean Games or Asian Olympic Games, ang haba ng track para sa kababaihan ay may sukat na 158 meters, samantalang 192 meters naman ang track para sa mga kalalakihan. Sa foot races ng Korean Games, female version ng Olympic Games, ang unang tatakbo ay ang pinakabatang kababaihan kasali doon. Kasunod sa pagtakbo ay mga kababaihan sa ayon sa kanilang edad. Ang huling tatakbo ay ang pinakamatandang kababaihan. Alam niyo bang ang unang babae na nagawagi sa Asian Olympics ay si Kiniska ng Sparta? Si Kiniska ang unang babae na itala nananalo ng isang kaganapan sa palarong Olymp olimpiko. Siya ay anak na babae ng haring Hero Pontip, si Archidamus II na Sparta, at ang buong kapatid na babae ni haring Agesilaus. Nagawagi si Kiniska sa karera ng apat na kabayo ng karwahe noong 396 at muli noong 392. Alam natin na bawal sumali ang babae noong Asian Olympic Games. Kaya, nang nagwagi ang mga kabayo ni Kiniska, ang pinarangalan na nagbigyan ng olive wreath ay ang may-ari ng kabayo na si Kiniska. Hanggang dito na lamang ang kwentong K-Sports. Abangan sa susunod na kabanata Ang tungkol naman sa Philippine Sports Commission, ang mga naging pinuno neto at ang kabuoan ng Philippine Sports Commission. Thank you, Commissioner Kiram, for that insightful segment. Time is up for this week's Rise Up Shape Up episode. Thank you, everyone, for your support. Rise Up Shape Up is brought to you by the Philippine Sports Commission, Women in Sports, we would like to thank our partner, Pagpour, and our event sponsor, Pukari Sweat. We'd also like to acknowledge the PSC Board of Commissioners, Chairman William I. Ramirez, Commissioners Arnold Agustin, Ramon Fernandez, Celia Kiram, and Charles Raymond Maxi. See you next week as we celebrate the Philippine Sports Commission's
anniversary. Our next episode is set to highlight the PSC's journey in strengthening the Philippine sports and athletic community throughout the years. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels. Again, this is your host, Clarissa. Have a marvelous day, everyone. See you next week.